Istanbul is the second largest city in the world. It has more than 13 million people living here. It's located on the Bosphorus Strait and covers the entire area of the Golden Horn, a natural harbor. And because of its size, Istanbul extends into both Europe and Asia. The city is the world's only metropolis to extend across more than one continent. Istanbul has an important geography because it has a long history that spans the rise and fall of the world's most famous empires. Due to its participation in these empires, Istanbul has undergone various name changes throughout its lengthy history. Although Istanbul may have been inhabited as early as 3000 BCE, it was not a city officially until Greek colonists arrived in the area of the 7th century BCE. These colonists were led by King Bitsas and settled there because of the strategic location along the Bosphorus Strait. King Bitsas named the city Byzantium after himself. Following its development by the Greeks, Byzantium became a part of the Roman Empire in the 300s. During this time, the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great undertook a construction project to rebuild the entire city. In 330, Constantine declared the city as the capital of the entire Roman Empire and renamed it Constantinople. After the death of Emperor Theodosius I in 395, an enormous upheaval took place as his sons permanently divided the empire. Following that division, Constantinople became the capital of the Byzantine Empire sometime early in the 400s. In 532, the anti-government Nika revolt broke out among the city's population and destroyed it. After the revolt, however, Constantinople was rebuilt as Constantinople became the seat, the center of the Greek Orthodox Church. In 1261, in the midst of this turmoil, the Empire of Nicaea recaptured Constantinople, and it was returned to the Byzantine Empire. Around the same time, the Ottoman Turks began conquering the cities surrounding Constantinople, effectively cutting it off from many of its neighboring cities. After being considerably weakened by constant invasions and being cut off from its neighbors by the Ottoman Turks, Constantinople was officially conquered by the Ottomans, led by Sultan Mehmet II on May 29th of 1453, after a 53-day siege. During the siege, the last Byzantine emperor, Constantine XI, died while defending his city. Almost immediately, Constantinople was named as the capital of the Ottoman Empire, and its name was changed to Istanbul. Upon taking control of the city, Sultan Mehmet sought to rejuvenate Istanbul. He created the Grand Bazaar, one of the largest covered marketplaces in the world. He brought back fleeing Catholic and Greek Orthodox residents. In addition to these residents, he brought in Muslim, Christian, and Jewish families to establish the mixed populace. <laughs> Imagine that! Sultan Mehmet also began the building of architectural monuments, schools, hospitals, public baths, and grand imperial mosques. And the Ottoman Empire ruled Istanbul until it was defeated and occupied by the Allies in World War I. And following its occupation by the Allies in World War I, the Turkish War of Independence took place, and Istanbul became a part of the Republic of Turkey in 1923, led by none other than Mustafa Ataturk. Okay, they just told us to turn off all mobile devices 
and I'm settling back. It's a little bit of a ride. Ten and a half hours, they just told us. So, a few good glasses of wine and a few catnaps are in my near future. And if the pilot has this thing pointed in the right direction, you'll start seeing down below the city of Istanbul and you'll be touching down very tired and very hungry. But we were a little surprised to find there's a very modern airport at the other end. Istanbul is a seriously 21st century city. And this airport was really clean, really easy to get around. And are you kidding me, Burger King? So we were soon in our taxi and on our way to our hotel. And you know, as much as I was enjoying the views along the way, I couldn't help but think that maybe Sue was thinking this was a little bit crazy, a little far to come to not really know what's going on. And I was only hoping that Sue thought this was all worth it because I know she was really hungry too and really tired. But this is an amazing culture of people. I mean, this baby has history. These people have an identity. And the world now is fascinated by the amounts of money Turkey is pouring into its infrastructure, something very few developed countries are able to do right now. And to think, they've been doing this ever since the Romans occupied this place many centuries ago. But first things first, we've got to get to that hotel. We got to get washed up and we need some food. Ah, oh, there it is. And I'm really tempted to lie down and take a nap, or really just take in the great views from our hotel. But we got to get out of here. My stomach, man, is beckoning. So in no time, we were in another taxi and headed for Taksim Square, the place people go to see and be seen but also a place known for great shops and amazing food. Now, fruits like pomegranates are really big in this part of the world, and they make amazing fruit drinks with them. But I do have a slightly different kind of drink in mind right now. And we were lucky enough to meet good friends right away who turned us on to Turkey's truly national drink, Rocky. The natives love it, and there's a reason. So the norm here is, you go to the fish market next door to your restaurant, you pick out the fish you want, the guy at the restaurant comes over, gets it, takes it next door and cooks it up for you any way you want. It doesn't get better than that. And so in true American form, I had all that and a lot more. And then, of course, you've got to take in their national beer as well. And then you got to take in some more Rocky. And then we kept drinking Rocky. And then we posed for pictures with our new buddies. And then more Rocky. And then some weird traditions. and then even more Rocky, and then more pictures. And then somebody had a crazy idea. Why don't we go to a club? Because surely we need more to drink, right? Of course. So we partied into the night. Only to find that at some hour, our new friends poured us into a taxi and sent us to our hotel. And it really wasn't until the next morning that I found that our taxi ride apparently turned into, for me, some sort of drunken photo fest where I was snapping pictures all over the place until, apparently, 
things started going a little wacky inside my brain. And then all went dark. But if you ever have a night like that, you'd better hope you wake up the next morning in Istanbul because this is the place real coffee was born. And on the way to a place highly recommended by the locals, I was only happy to find there were some people who had maybe a slightly tougher night last night than I did. And so, Sue took on the task of locating some baklava. And my job was to locate the coffee and get coffee in front of us quickly. But they don't do quickly here. They do it right. And I got it done right. And this new friend saved my life. And that much Turkish coffee makes you brave. Gives you a new outlook on life. I'm ready to go do something. Like take another cab ride. And so we hopped in another cab and asked this guy to take us to the big sports arena where there was a huge event scheduled for that week in Istanbul. And after a few minutes figuring out the uh, ticket purchase routine, we secured ourselves two really great seats, settled in then for a great afternoon and night of watching the big girls hit the fuzzy yellow ball. What a thrill. Hey Maria, you go girl. After tennis, it was time to eat again. So now it's time to talk about some real food. But first, one of our new buddies had to be sure that his blood pressure could handle what we were talking about doing. So you see here, there's not a lot of stuff in cans and jars and frozen packages. There's no Cinnabon. No. This is real stuff. People make this stuff all day, every day. And I'm telling you, it's as much science as it is cooking. And even more than that, I think it's art, actually. So keep in mind, there are almost 14 million people living here, and a lot of tourists and visitors coming through every day. And I can tell you, the people here prefer fresh foods right in front of them. And trust me, even the fat guys here look pretty good compared to Western standards. Now, I'm not saying they don't have their fast food outlets, but I can only tell you, I didn't see very many people there. This is what people wanted. Grilled fresh vegetables, lamb like I had never tasted before. And you could pass these places no matter what time of day, and they were always bringing fresh supplies out for the masses of people who just really enjoyed the food these very serious people put together every day. And they even had my hometown favorites. Ah! They figured something out that we have not in the U.S. figured out yet. They can move a lot of people efficiently and cleanly and not have to use fossil fuel burning vehicles on the highway. Now think about it. This is the second largest city in the world, second only to Shanghai. They've got maybe the cleanest and certainly one of the most efficient above-ground tram systems I have ever seen. 
σαν το Try moving 200 people and their cars 50 miles on one of our interstate highways during rush hour. And tell me how long that takes. These guys can do it in just a little over an hour, all the time. And the waterways aren't just about transportation. The Bosphorus River connects the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmar. And the entire length of this waterway is teeming with all kinds of fish. And guess what, lovers of free enterprise? These people don't need a fishing license to do this. And they tell me a lot of these people don't have to buy any meats in their lives because they just catch them every day right out of the water. So if you're looking for a quick bite of some serious carbohydrates, some clams on the half shell, and maybe some bootleg Marlboros, some sweet roasted chestnuts, flowers for every occasion, or just a great day out with the family. Or maybe some amazingly scenic views. The Bosphorus River gives this city beauty, an amazing culture, and an incredible soul. If I've learned nothing else in my six decades on this earth, I've learned that a culture cannot survive 5,000 years by imposing what it thinks are its values on the rest of the world. You do it by living what you believe, no matter what that is, and letting others live and believe as they wish. Because in our travel, we found that at the end of every day, we're all pretty much the same. People all over the world do the same things all the time. We all want to look good, so we shop for nice things. We hang out with our family and our friends. We value the other species of animals that are around us. Guys hang out with the guys. And sometimes, we spot pretty girls walking through town. We enjoy the great aromas coming off street foods. We're curious about the differences in our cultures. And we do our best to make good lives for our children. So when I come to a city like Istanbul, I'm reminded that I'm only one of the seven billion standing on this earth. And each one of us has a responsibility to reach out and touch as many of that other seven billion as we can in our lifetimes. So it was time to hop in another cab and begin the process of saying goodbye for now to a great city, knowing that I had been changed yet again forever and that I would be back because I've got lifetime friends now, right here in Istanbul. Come with us next time and visit. I guarantee you won't regret it. Ixi